Hello and welcome to another episode of Face to Face. And I must say it's a special one because today I'm speaking to a footballer, humanitarian. But I must say an all-round, very, very good guy. He always makes people happy when he's in their company. My guest today is Jonathan Mensah. Welcome back to Face to Face. Jonathan, good to see you. Good to see you too. It's been a while. A very, very long time, I must um, say. Yeah, but we talk most of the time. Yeah, we so. talk most yeah. of the time. And I, I, there are a lot of places I want to start this conversation with, but I want us to start from the beginning. Okay. From Oboise, through Italy, through Spain, through France, through Russia. You missed uh, South Africa. Yeah, I missed South Africa. That was the yeah. first stop. Yeah. Okay, so let's do Ghana. Oboise, South Africa. So Oboise, Ghana. Yes, Obuasi Accra, because <laughs> there's no airport in Obuasi, international it's been, airport. But it's been actually. a long journey for you to this point. Yes. When you look back, been. how do you feel? I'm blessed, you know, to start from, I was actually born in uh, Dakuma. Mm. So from there I moved to Obuasi, came back to Accra, traveled, and now I'm all over the place. I'm just blessed, you know, because... Uh, most of the guys that I started playing with, schooling with, you know, they're still in Ghana. They're traveling up and down. But mine is just uh, unbelievable. Did you envisage you would get this big as a young man, that you would become this kind of well-known footballer? Um, I didn't. You know, I just wanted to have fun. And, uh, you know, in the process of having fun, uh, God also was doing his thing. So I'm just grateful. When did you realize you were a good footballer? Ooh. Did somebody tell you or you just realized one day, hey, I'm really good at this? I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think as a kid, you always believed that, you know, you were good. And uh, growing up, you hear a lot of people say it and um, even good coaches say it because, you know, when you're young, hey, Mr. Me idea and all that, you know, we say that. But when you get to a professional level and, and you get uh, good, good coaches telling you you're good, yeah, you know, that, is, uh, that serves as a motivation for you to keep going. And how did you get into the Asgold Academy? At, that, at the time that you went to Asgold, they had a really good academy. They were, di they were actually dissolving the academy. Mm. So when I went there, uh, Coach Duncan took me straight into the senior team because, um, yeah, I think I was 16, mm -hmm. so he was going to add me uh, to the under-17 squad. But... They dissolved it, and he, he signed me for uh, my first professional contract. Th that's a special bond, you and... Oh, yes, David you know, uh, yeah, because um, a kid from nowhere, you know, he took me under his wing. What did he see? He saw something uh, no one else saw, so um, I'm grateful for that man. He's such an incredible man, we all know, and uh, he... He took me as a son and, you know, he's... A lot of people want to know, how do you get along with David Duncan? Because for those of us who know him, he's yeah. not the easiest of... He's a brilliant man. I believe he deals with people the way they come at him. You know, me being his son, I always go to him as a father. Uh, someone like you going to him, you go to him as a journalist. So, you know, he's going to deal with you the same way. His, you know, kids, friends, colleagues in... in uh, the coaching department, I think he's going to go to them as coaches. So he just have this uh, no-nonsense attitude and, and some people like it, some people don't. You know, that's how human nature is. You left very young and for a lot of kids who leave here, they have the advantage of perhaps going into a feeder system somewhere they have to learn. You were thrown into South Africa mm -hmm. and it wasn't a learning situation. You were there to work, yes. basically, and learn on the job. How did you adjust? Um, I had to uh, adjust to a lot of things because, you know, I was used to one weather and when I went to South Africa, it was different. And the time that I went there was actually winter for them. So um, it was something different. Could Duncan looked at my face one training and he was like, are you OK? Because when I was blowing my nose and I was bleeding and oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was a different um set up for me but i had to um keep focused and and you know stick to what i wanted to do a, a lot of us look at the south african league and say 
it's not that difficult. It's not that difficult. But you are perhaps <laughs> like a, one of the few Ghanaian footballers mm. who have been there yeah. and mm-hmm. done well. A lot That's of right. Ghanaian footballers don't do well in South Africa. Yeah. Why? I, I don't actually have a particular reason for why uh, most of the Ghanaians don't make it there. But I, I went there, you know, on a mission as a young kid, wanting to have fun, like I said earlier on, because uh, in the process of um, um, working, you still, you know, need to have fun, and, and that's what I did. We had Duncan to <coughs> always be there for us, but, you know, at some point he left, yeah. so uh, we, you know, we had no one to look up to us as a father, as a mentor. So we just need to be um, uh, on a surviving mode, and that's what we did. And you made it work so well that you ended up in Europe. I did. Like I said, it's one of the toughest leagues in Africa, but, you know, oh, South Africa, but it's really tough. And um, like you said, why is it that some of the guys don't make it there? Because it's it's tough. Mm. It's tough. Udinese signed you, but you never played for them. Yes, that's right. Um, it happens, you know. Um, I signed and moved on. Went you must have been home. excited, the club of Sweden. Oh, yeah, because it's like, wow, you know. So it was Sweden like up, yeah. a club whereby lots of Ghanaian, good Ghanaian players have passed, and uh, I was, you know, the next. And uh, I also um, took that path. But it was in Spain rather that you you you. That's you, right. You got when, a taste rather yeah, than Italy. Italy, because I was still young and uh, they already had their international spots occupied already. So I had to move on to Spain to uh, play one year alone there. Then uh, I did another uh, half season there before I moved to uh, France. Do you looking back now? Yeah. Do you think you would have? done really well in the Serie A? I believe uh, I would because that is one league that I, you know, I've been, um, I've been wanting to, to, to play because, uh, you know, the way they play physical, tactically, and um, it's interesting, you know. So I wanted to have a taste, but um, I didn't get to play there. I just need to move on with my life. And then you did France, where you did Evian? Yes. You had fun in Evian. I did, but it was, it was challenging, you know. Obviously, everywhere is challenging, but it's, it, it was... What were uh, the difficulties at Evian? So when I went, I was still well, fresh from the World Cup, from uh, Spain. I need to adjust to different things again. Languages, people, culture, food. Uh, as a young kid, it's always tough, you know, and uh, I remember coming back, coming from Spain to France, the coach told me if I'm not speaking uh, the language, I'm not playing. Mm. My coach, what if I'm playing good? He said, I know, but you still need, you know, needs to be able to communicate with the boys. So I had to learn the language and then going to France now, I had no choice than to learn before the coach even tells me that. So. It was really challenging for me. And it's an interesting period of your life because you mentioned you had been to the World Cup. That was yes. the 20 World Cup. Yes. No. Or the Senior World senior Cup. Senior World Cup, yeah, okay. 2010. Let's separate two things here. Yeah. You had gone to the 20 World Cup. Everybody knows what happened there. Uh-huh. You had made your name and all that. Yeah. But how was it? I yeah. already had my name. Oh, come on. You made your name more. Oh, okay. More. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you, you feel you were a big name when you went to the No, World no, Cup. I wasn't a big name. Like, yes. you made your name. Like... I, I would prefer... I announced my presence. You think so? Yeah. You, you showed the world what you were capable of doing. Definitely. The biggest definitely. I was, I, was, I was in the top 10 after the tournament. Mm-hmm. Top young players, uh, top 10. So, like I said, I announced myself. <laughs> and you had the opportunity to announce yourself on an even bigger stage when you were invited to join the national Senior team, team. team. Yes, for the World Cup. Right. How yeah. was that call for you? Oof, it was incredible. We were actually, like... 10, 12 guys yeah. from the under-20 team. Right. So it was, it was fun. You know, it wasn't like I was alone. I was looking at left and right. But, you know, I saw these guys that I was um, playing with in the under-20 team for, for the past two years. So it was fun, you know, having them around. And um, for me personally, I thought I was just metal and mm-hmm. You know, I was part of this thing, you know, cool. having fun. You know, that's my thing because I always love to have fun. Mm-hmm. Even though we're still working and... and 
tend to something else. Yeah, I remember because I interview my first interview with you uh -huh. was the day before you played. Yes, I remember that. We did that in a hotel, in a I garden somewhere. That. Yes. In Pretoria. I yes, somewhere. I that. And you were nervous. <laughs> oh, I was because, like I said, you know, um, if my guys from the under 20 team wasn't part of, you know, um, the guys that gra uh, got graduated, you know, into the team, I was going to be even, even more nervous. But I had them around me, so I was good. But then when they leave and we are, you know, on and on about, uh, with our daily life, I was like, oh my gosh, like this senior national team, Black Stars. Because I remember 2006, I was Shane Jama, you know, <laughs> when we won our first World Cup game. So it was, it was fun. You Just know, four years later, you are yeah, on the pitch. Yeah, four years later, I'm playing. So it was like, no, this is like going way faster than I thought, which is grace. You know, the grace of God kind of takes you to places that, you know, you, you never even um, imagined. So... Me being there, I was like, oh, oh, always, you know, when it gets to training, okay, fun time now. When we're done, I'm like, oh, my gosh. So when you were interviewing me, I was like, oh, my gosh, like, seriously, this is really happening. So it was fun. And I remember that interview because for those of you who are watching us, it took one hour to get him out of his hotel room to come for that interview. <laughs> It was him and John Pencil. I remember that interview wow. as well. And I was nervous as well because it was also my first interview on live TV mm. at the time. So both of us were nervous. No, yeah. worry, it wasn't just you. But, you know, especially when someone is asking you questions, you know, that is, yeah. <laughs> but that World Cup was something else. How much of an imprint has that World Cup 2010? You've played others. Yeah. But 2010, what did it mean to you personally? It was... It was a symbol of uh, um, Africa going to the world because, you know, an African team hosted it. And um, I, was, I, was, um, I was honored, you know, to be part of the team and even to even start a game. So I was like, wow. And that is one iconic World Cup a lot of people remember. Mm -hmm. And that is the World Cup Ghana went far. So... Uh, Definitely people will remember that, and, and that is one profound uh, moment for me in my career as well. There's something I've always wanted to ask you. I, I've spoken to a lot of footballers. I mm. observe footballers a lot, mm. athletes. You are very well balanced in your life. Mm. <clears throat> How do you manage that? You know, because footballers live on the edges okay. of things. But That's what you, you think? You see, they are, they do. Okay. But you seem to have found a very reasonable balance between mm. your profession mm -hmm. and just your life. How do you manage that? I'm sure a lot of footballers would love to know um, how you manage it. Okay, so I believe it's two different things. Your life and being a professional f footballer is different, you know, things. So um, if I, I believe you can, if you can manage your life properly, you can manage your professional life properly as well. So, um, Definitely, I make mistakes, you know, don't get me wrong, but uh, the more you can do the right things in your life, I think it will, it will uh, help you in whatever you are doing, not just uh, playing football. I think if you're a banker, whatever it is, if you are living a great life outside what you do, I think it will transform into uh, the profession you're doing. And you seem to have translated that into everywhere you've been in the sense that not everywhere has been good to you, mm. but... You've gone through it and moved on. You yeah. went to Anji Machkashkala. Yeah, that's and, right. And from there, that's where you moved to the U.S. After. Yes. Right. Yes. Let's talk about that experience. In um, if France was difficult then in language, then Russia... I think, yes. Uh, you, 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 don't, you don't have to shy away from challenges. You know, it makes you grow. It makes you learn. And uh, I, am, I am, you know, that type that always want to learn new things and... Um, take up new challenges. Like I said, call, uh, the call-up call that I had to join the 2010 squad, it was such a big challenge for me. Uh, first person I called was my mom. Mom, hey, they called me and they were like, oh, you, you're gonna do well, you know, mommy, with his words, you know. And um, I, 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 I took it personal because uh, being part of the team is one thing and being able to break into the starting 11 is also a different thing. So. I love challenges, and, and that has, you know, kept me going. Talk of uh, the Russia experience. It was such an incredible 
mm. place. You enjoyed your time there? I, I did. Like I said, it taught me different things, and um, it has helped me along the way. Did you, what influenced your decision to say, let me just move to the U.S.? Considering, you um, know, Guardians, we are football snobs. Mm -hmm. When we think you're a big player, we think you have to stay in Europe. Okay. So for us, Ghana's best center back at that time mm. decides that, okay, I'm not playing in mainstream Europe. Mm. I'm going to the MLS. Of course, there were criticisms, but what influenced that decision for you? Mm. I heard a lot of things, you know, people were criticizing me for making a move that I think at that time was good for me, my family, and, you know, people around me. Obviously, you won't get everyone to love you, and that's fine. You have to be okay with that. Um, my family was okay with the move that I was making because um, I have played more games than I, I, I did during my five-year period in France. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, I would say it's been great for me. Someone will say, "Oh, I don't know. You know, why is he playing there whilst he can still play in Europe?" So if if you are not in someone's shoes, you will know how. Uh, you know, um, you know what that size is. So um, I, I just I loved that move, and uh, I believe whatever that uh, whoever that's watching uh, the league, they see what I'm doing in the league. But maybe you can also offer a bit of perspective mm. for the Ghanaian football fan. What does a footballer consider? before making some of these things. You've already spoken about the fact you have to yeah. think about your family, you have yeah. to think about yourself. A lot of Ghanaian football, football fans seem to think that, well, if you're good and you're, you are informed, mm. Europe is the place. It doesn't matter whether you are playing or not. You just sit on the bench, your time will come. Yeah. What perspective can you offer? Like I said, before you make decisions, you have to... Um, cons like, like I said, before life and then football life. So, you know, you have to go into life because it, it, it plays a big role in, in whatever you're doing. Um, I know some banks in Ghana don't allow couples to work in the same bank, mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it's like, okay, it's, um, you have to think about all that, you know where to go at this particular time and all that. So um, I need to talk to my family first and uh, let them know why I'm, you know, doing that because they will support me regardless of what I'm doing, if it's good. Mm -hmm. So they supported me 100% and, and I took that decision. Do you consider the national team also when making such a decision that, hey, yeah, if definitely. I here, maybe don't call me again? We, no. So <coughs> wherever that you are playing, because I believe, you know, lots of the players play in other leagues, that is not as competitive as the MLS, but they get call-ups. Why? Because they're doing well with their teams. They're scoring goals, they're defending well, playing week in, week out. And I, I, I believe if you're doing well with your team, no matter where it is, you know, if, if the coach considers to call you, you just need to come and prove why he called you. So I, I don't see the reason why people will argue or um, uh, criticize the call-ups of the coach because... Um, definitely people will have their opinions and um, whatever they want to say, but you need to prove them wrong. And, um, you know, that's all you can do. Okay, that's all you can do. I will take a quick break, and when we return, I'll have a conversation with Jonathan about charity because he seems to do a lot of work in that regard as well. There's still a football conversation, though, on Face to Face. Welcome back to Face to Face, special edition, I must say, with Jonathan. It's always good to catch up with a good friend and have a conversation. Jonathan, you spent... You know my good friend. You have renounced my good you friendship my license? Good friend. No. Okay, all right. I'll work back at getting... We are just, into, into we are just um, good associates, maybe. Okay. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah, I'll put it that way. <laughs> I like the way he says it with a straight face. Yeah. You put in a lot of hard work in to your charities. Basically, how, how did you get into that? Where did it start from? We know footballers do this for the optics. 
Mm. You don't do this for the optics. That much I know. I, I started this, I think, the same year that I traveled to South Africa. That's those very young. times, Yes, so those times that I was at Ashanti Gold, you know, and in, well, those times it was 1.5 million. Mm. You know, so it was a lot <laughs> for me. But, you know, we still had time. We bought, you know, uh, Sobolo, whatever, whatever, for the kids around the area because uh, they see, hey, Pajo, Abo, Ashanti Gold, and all that. So, you know, we wanted to, um, as a family, because we, we love to give back because that's a way that uh, we show love because, you know, you can show love in many ways. So we do that. And so we were doing it back then. But when I traveled to South Africa, um, I told myself it was like a covenant with, with, with God because God has taken me from nowhere to South Africa now. So it was like whenever I come back home, I will do this for, for the community because I came from the community and this is what I can do for the community as well. And... How how do you combine the two, mm. playing football, humanitarian <laughs> activities? Because you seem to do it at the same time. Yeah, I now have my beautiful wife, you know, uh, that is helping me with the organization, the planning and all that. Before, I used to do it with my mom. We still do it, though, but wifey is, is more into, into the specifics now because... There were some things that I didn't do before, but, you know, she plans and, you know, know what to do. So uh, she's really helpful and, and that has really taken, you know, some of the uh, load of me now. The Jonathan Mensa Foundation, that's Foundation. the Joe Mens Foundation. Foundation, that's right. So what are some of the activities that you engage in, if you can be specific? What um, it's just, you know, you uh, helping people with school fees, you know, like... Uh, preventing uh, teenage pregnancy, donations, uh, helping clean up. So it's it's just a broad thing that we're doing and, and, you know, we look at projects that we can do at a particular time. There was an interesting story I read and I, I was touched by it where a group of 12-year-olds in Columbus decided to raise money by selling cookies oh. <laughs> and stuff. And yeah. they raised $2,000 for... A lot of, More I think, a lot of money dollars, yeah. to help your foundation. Yeah. I think almost over three thousand dollars. So that, that takes they are, Yeah, it's just that incredible. Young. They are a um, young core of group that support the Columbus crew. So they saw what I was doing back in Ghana, and uh, they were like, "Oh, this is interesting. We like what way can we help?" And I'm like, "Any way you guys want to help." So they started um, before every home game. They do a tailgate. They sell, they, they did their own bracelets, sell cookies, sell whatever they can sell to raise money for the Gentleman's Foundation. So it was something that I was like, wow, you know, kids that I, I knew nothing of, they started, you know, raising funds for me because they've seen me do something great. And it was, you know, such uh, a great feeling for me to know that people out there seeing the good works that I'm doing and, and they are eager to support. And you do this here and also in the community that you work in, in the U.S., which that's is Columbus. Right. Yeah. So that's why they get you, you were Health Humanitarian of the Year. In 2017 when I went there. What, what, what did that mean for you as uh, that is, that is an something who is working somewhere else. That is something that I, I um, hold dear to my, to my heart because I'm, I'm just a servant, you know. I'm a professional soccer player, but I, I'm, I'm a human being that want to serve, want to love. So, um, so when you go to the team, they have a form that um, you need to fill. So based on what you write in the forms, I love to go to hospitals. I love to see the, you know, all these. And then when you put the categories that you want to do, when there's a program like that, they call upon you like lots of the guys love to read in front of kids, love to partake in um, uh, some games with the Down syndrome kids. So when you put all this, whenever there's a program like that, they call upon you and, and you go do it. So that particular year, I did a lot of uh, charity work and they honored me with that award. When, when you moved to Columbus, did you envisage that you would end up being so grounded in the community. You are now as <laughs> original a Colombian as oh. you are a Dakuman boy, perhaps. I know. Um, 
next year is going to be my fourth year, even though um, I'm, I'm still praying for something new, but I'm, I'm happy there. Um, I love that place so much because they are so welcoming, they are, uh, they are warm, and um, they, they're genuine people. So um, Harrison has been there for like, well, this is his, he's been there for six, six years, years now. now. So uh, that alone should tell you that that place is a beautiful place. Um, so, you know, they loved me and I had to reciprocate that back. And that's what I'm doing. It's interesting you mentioned Harrison. You, yeah. you have a bit of a Ghanaian contingent. Oh, yeah. In, in we used team. to buy... Yeah, they've been moving Yeah, around. I know. <laughs> well, how, how does that happen? Oh, it's... So many Ghanians. It's beautiful. You know, when, when we're in the locker room, we... Sp hey, are we at the same? Then the guys will be like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Speak English, please. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> you know, it's... It feels like home, you know. And Columbus itself is one of the big Ghanaian population in the oh, United okay. States. So you hear the tree all the time when you walk in a Walmart or something like that, you see them all the time. So not just in the locker room, you know, walking around some neighborhoods, you just hear the Ghanaian language fly by. How, how important was Harrison to you settling down when you went to the He place? actually recommended me to the coach because the coach was actually looking at me. Oh, okay. And he went up to Harrison and was like, hey, uh, you know, we're looking at some center backs. And there's one of the names, you know, we know he's Ghanaian. So. And then Harrison... Um, Harry is actually a big bro and he just said, coach, if you're looking at someone that can fit in our system, go no far. Mm. This guy is the right guy. So, Harrison, salute. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Very, very important. And looking forward, you, you also have the opportunity to replicate that perhaps for the young boys mm -hmm. who have come into yeah, the Columbus, Columbus team. You had Lalas. Lalas, but he's Abubaka, moved on right. now. Yes. What, we heard a lot of big things about him. Tell us a bit so about him. So his story is just beautiful because he was in Legon and he got scholarship to move to uh, Dayton, Ohio. Mm -hmm. uh, so he was schooling and he went through the, the Asoka system, which is you go to school, university, you play in a school team, and then you get drafted into the MLS. So that was how come he joined our team. And he used to actually watch, watch me, which was the 2014 World Cup. He wore the 10 and the 14. So... He was like, man, I want to be like this guy. And then a couple of years later, we were playing together in the same team. So he, you know, he's, he's such a great guy, you know, great human being aside. Being a good defender is a great human being. Age-wise, you're not, you're not an old man. Yeah, I'm you're, not. You're a yeah. kid. I, I am. In relative... I'm not a kid, though. You know what I'm saying? In mm -hmm. relative terms, football mm -hmm. age-wise. Yeah. Do you get upset when people say, oh, Jonathan Mensah with him? He's past his prime. No, I don't. Like I said, um, <clears throat> everyone got their own opinion, and their uh, opinion matters to them. It doesn't matter to me because uh, if the opinion is about how I'm progressing, how I'm doing, then I can look at that. But if it's about, oh, we him and no, he's not, this and that, I don't look at that. I just, it serves as a motivation for me to keep going and, and to keep working hard. So... Um, I had a lot of messages like that before this recent African Cup, and uh, I just went there and contributed to the team. You, you, you've had your highs and your lows. Mm. There was a time when you were virtually undroppable in the Black Stars. I'm still undroppable, though. Okay. Yeah. But do you, do you think you've had lean times as well? When there are times when you look back and say, I could have done better today, or I'm not at my best I think any professional footballer has has you know has had their up and down times, and uh, I won't um, I won't say no. It's a yes, and uh, like I said, it serves as a motivation for me. You know, sometimes you come back from um, an injury and and you want to come back and play right away, but it's a process. You know, and and behind the scenes stuff don't come, you know, to the light. But some people that work with us behind the scenes, you know, they see whatever that's going on there because some people see just a weekend game. Some people also see throughout the week work that goes in before the weekend. So if you are going to put all that into consideration, you'll see 
uh, the importance of uh, how some people's appreciation can push you even higher. Uh, do you think we as Ghanaian fans, mm. you, you play for one of the most high-pressure national teams mm. anywhere in the world, <laughs> where everybody knows, claims they know football, yeah. so to say. Does that get to you? No, but... The pressure. Does it frustrate you? No, I think health, they, they, there are two different types of uh, frustration, you know, you know, being frustrated frustrated that the level that you know this team is capable of like uh, getting is you know is is beyond um you know our limits i think that is okay but you know when you're frustrated about things that are not important and relevant then you know you're mistaken but you know when you know you know the level of you know the players that we have on the team you know, you would expect the performance to be up. You know, I can agree with that, but not to now. Saying is, you know, when the coach makes his selection, because your selection, why you know, this doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Your opinion, but when I see here, you see here, eleven when you see here, so you help, you help support it, and then and then we move forward. You know, we as players, we understand, we understand that way. You know that. So the population don't seem to think like I that. I think we have to because at some point you won't. But at at one particular point that eleven has been selected to play, BBI aside, everything aside, and then you support the team. And then after that, you can have, you know, you can say whatever you want to say. But now you just need to focus on, you know, now it's like celebrating, you know, what you have now. You need to celebrate it. You know, oh, that be, that be, no, celebrating now and then, you know, being grateful will bring something even more. The, the reason why I'm asking you this is mm. because you've been in the team through some of the greatest times mm -hmm. of the modern black stars. Yes. And also some of the darkest times yeah. of the modern black stars. Mm. You've seen through everything. So yeah. you are in a unique position mm. to tell us mm -hmm. a bit more than the ordinary person. Yeah. Do you like playing for Ghana simply because it is Ghana? Or the motivations are more? A lot of fans seem to think that there was a time when an answer would be an automatic yes. Mm. These days, there might be some hesitation mm. if you tell your average soccer fan that I love Ghana. That's mm. why I play for Ghana. I think first thing is to love Ghana first. Whether you love Ghana or not, you're a Ghanaian. So when you're called upon to play, Either you love it or you love something else. The supporters don't think you love. Okay, so like I said, what makes them think we don't love the team? Because if I don't love the team, I don't need to come waste my time, waste the nation's time, the coaches, whatever it is. So if you don't love it, don't come around it. If you love it, then you are all in. Come help. And I believe whoever that gets the call up, you know, comes with whole heart and, and you know, coming to help the team move forward. At what point did have you ever been frustrated as a Black Stars player? And you look around the stadium and say, I don't want to do this again. I I hope and wish it never gets to that point. I never want to say, you know, I don't want to play no I've more. Have you been frustrated? No, no. Frustrated is normal. I'm human. And uh, we as players, we're human. And uh, it's normal to be frustrated sometimes, but you know, not to the extent that it will lead to something that is not good. So being frustrated, yes, I have been. Let's talk high points and low points. You mentioned 2010 mm. as a high point. Of course, 29, 2000, 2009, another high point because mm. you won the World Cup. What other high points? Two, you... three high points during that time though. Because okay. 2004, actually, we won the African Cup with the under-20s, we won the World Cup, we went to African Cup 2010, mm -hmm. we got to the finals, and then we went to World Cup 2010. So I would say within two years, it was mm -hmm. incredible. incredible. Those, were the, those were the points that people It was remember. high, yeah, people remember, and I think 2012, was it a high? Because we got to the semifinals, mm -hmm. we finished fourth. Mm -hmm. 2013... Quarter finals. No, semifinals as well. Yes, yeah, semi-finals. Semi-finals as well, yeah. We finished fourth, you know, because... Yeah. 
um, and um, 2015. Okay. So, throughout nine to whatever, do you count the semifinals as a high? It depends on you are telling us. So, I, I, I would say, oof, we as players always want more. So, I would say the semifinals, getting to the finals is, is a high. Mm -hmm. I would put a high on, 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 on that one, getting to the finals. But I would say semifinals is, is a low because, uh, you know, when you... Sometimes I, I park my car, talk to some fans out there, you know, just to get into their heads a little bit. And, yeah, maybe be a semifinal and yeah, bre. So, you know, when you hear that and you yourself, you playing each and every game, get to the final, you won the cup too. Mm -hmm. So when you don't get it and then you remember what you spoke to the guy on the street about, then you're like, oh my gosh, I let this guy down. So that's how we feel. So when we get to the semifinals and we don't make it to the finals, it breaks our heart. So I will put a low on that one. And uh, 15 would be a high low because... We lost to Ivory Coast. They won twice. It was against Ghana. It was both on penalties, and we don't penalty, like to hear penalties. Painful. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if I should put a high on, or, or a low on that one. Mm. Yeah, but um, hmm, I'll put high-low, maybe. High-low. <laughs> high high, yeah, high-low. <laughs> but that was, uh, the 2015 was also the AFCON where you, you put out a viral video where you were a bouncer. Was oh, yeah, I remember with Asamoja. Yeah, How yeah, did yeah. that come about? That video was funny. We were just, I think we went for lunch. After lunch, we were just walking, and then Razak was like... But I, I must say, that hotel was horrible. Mongomo. Mm. Oh, my gosh. But <laughs> like I said, behind the scenes stuff, if we had to talk about all that, we will stay here till tomorrow. So after lunch, we were walking about, Razak started pushing people and we were like, why are you doing that? You're always bullying people and all that. So Asamoja was like, oh, Muntua, 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 Muntua. If it's my BBC, see how? And they were like, if it's my then I say, oh, Muntua, Muntua, Muntua. Muntua had to say, they're higher club. And then we dropped at you. Then we drop at you. So we're like, oh, and you're bad. So then we came behind the, where we went for lunch and that was one of our rooms. So, um, you know, it was like a quick sketch that Samoa yeah. drew for us. We understood it, bam. And then uh, Achu was a superstar that we were going to drop. <laughs> and <laughs> all the guys, uh, Frankie Champon and uh, Razak Brahima, uh, Ajima Bedu, yeah. they all came through. And then yeah. Achu, you know, because he was smallish and all that, he was like, oh, don't you remember me? Me too, I'm Christian Achu. And we're like, and so what? <laughs> <Get outta here. laughs> It was, but were you it surprised was, at how that video blew up? Because was, that video was because, it, like was I said, big. we didn't. Asamoah is so creative, and you know he had uh, uh, another creative guy, you know, behind him, which is me. So <laughs> it just it just took off like shoof. It was crazy. Yeah, but for crazy. for for a lot of people, that gave them an insight into how you guys coexist with each other. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you mentioned. Somebody like Asam Wajan. Yeah. You, you played a lot under him. Yeah. As captain. What with did he him. Mean? With, and with him. Yeah. Yes. Um, he's such a, a great guy, a funny guy. Um, like I said, what happens behind the scenes, if we are to show all that to people, they might or they will appreciate us more because, like I said, you just see the weekend, but you don't see what goes through the week. And uh, if, you know, we, you see some of our preparation, you see that, you know, we are doing everything we can to, like, uh, we do a lot of things like team bonding and all that. So right after lunch, you don't just get up and go into your room on your phone. We stay there for a couple of hours, one or two hours, talk about each other, talk about what we can do to improve the team. So it's not just, you know, what people see on the field, it's, you know, what actually goes on in, in camp. All right, then we'll take a quick break and return for the final segment. And I'll ask uh, Jonathan a few trivia questions. Let's see what hmm. he remembers. Face to face, we'll be right back.
Welcome back to the final head of my conversation with Jonathan. I said, this, I'm just asking him questions, you know, just random questions. So, Jonathan, you're a defender. Which attacker do you hate to face the most? Hey. Mm. Who gives you the most trouble? Ever, since you started playing. Which attacker do you sleep and say, ah, this guy? Um, wow. Of course, I cannot remember all of them, but you know those the those Botswana and Uganda strikers. You no, know, no, I quit Fuma by and all that. So, <laughs> of a war. But yeah, I faced. Uh, I would say, I would say Zlatan, Cristiano, mm -hmm. uh, and this Germano boy, Müller. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but he he didn't score though. He gave an assist because. You know, they're deadly strikers, and you know, um, if you want to be the best, you play against the best. So, playing against them, they've been tough, but you know, okay, yeah, I love it. You, you haven't scored much, but you have scored. Which is your favorite? Uh, one that I scored in France, actually, for Evian, Evian versus uh, Rance. Baba's former team. Mm -hmm. We're playing at home, and I I hit one cracker. No, you hit a cracker. Yeah, it was it was crazy. You know, <laughs> it was a free kick. We played a shot, a free kick, and cross came in. Defender cleared it. It didn't go far, and I hit a drop volley. Mm -hmm. Boom! If you had the opportunity to play another position other mm. than centre back, which one would you choose? I'll play alongside Wakasu. <laughs> in the middle. That, 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 that would be a foul infested oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I will, I will play alongside Wakas. You want to play hold? Hold. You've never had the opportunity to play holding? No, I haven't. I have discussed with some coaches, tried it at training, and they're like, but they don't want to be well. You have the build for it. Yeah. These days they prefer tall. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And you play well from the back as well. So. Yeah. So, you know, a coach can take that risk, you know. But most of the time, whenever we discuss, uh, the coach, the coaches are, you know, more of you can smell danger. So, you know, we still want you at the back. Because sometimes when you smell danger in, in the middle, it will be too late for you to get to the ball. So they, they always prefer me staying at the back. And what do you do outside of football? You know, mm -hmm. there are those who say footballers don't like watching football. Oh, they like to sleep. I watch every game, mm. every game, every game. And uh, I am a family guy. I love to be around my family. I, I love to read as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. And do you love the gym? Gym is. It's work. I don't. I don't love gym per se, but You're a fitness I, I love. Freak, no health. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know, our 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 health is our wealth. Because mm. um, this woman, uh, gospel artist, Christian Love, mm -hmm. you cannot go. You yeah. know, I went to Ohana area. You cannot go. We were so. If you are not healthy, you cannot do some things that you you would love to do. So, I I am always you know advocating to people to you know stay on the health. Uh, lane. There's a question I always ask the footballers I interview, and it has to do with money. Okay. How do you manage money? You get a lot of money. Money is. Money is is is. Today they come with three money, sika emoja, you know, and uh, it comes and goes. But if you have, uh, you know. We as footballers need to be um, financially educated, I think, twice or three times because you are just always want to play, you know. And as the money comes, you might need some intelligent people and genuine people that knows more than you when it comes to money so that, you know, they can help you in, in, in that aspect. Because, like you said, we, we make money and, uh, you know, um, some of us don't necessarily have the knowledge to be able to invest well and um, uh, save, you know. So we need people, genuine people, that knows more than we do in that field to help us with money. And a lot of footballers also end up going back into football, either coaching, mm. scouting, mm. agents. 
Yeah. Does that interest you or you I, are looking forward to a life of just relaxing? I just I just want to be there to help the young kids, you know. So you I'm, want to go into philanthropy full time when you are done? Not necessarily, but I still want to be attached to football. Football is going to be my life forever. But the aspect of traveling is, you know, part that I really don't like after my playing career because mm -hmm. we travel so much, so much, especially in the United States. Uh, just we don't travel to just one place, mm -hmm. which is um, obviously home games and uh, Cincinnati because they just came into the league. So, but apart from that, we travel to anywhere else. So it's you just imagine the mileage on the body, you know, just traveling. So. I want to be still part of that, and I'm looking to be, you know, doing my badge as a coach. So if I do that, you think you make a good coach? Just let me be the coach so that you decide whether I'm good or not. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I still have a long way to go in my playing career. So after that, I will still uh, need to go through some learning process and and then pass the badge before yeah, I would be a coach. Um, but as for now, I'm, I'm just enjoying my playing career now. The, the essence of family is very important to you when mm. one goes through your social media channels, you see mm. lots of references to your parents, sometimes your mother, sometimes your sister, mm. sometimes other members of the family. Yeah. How has your family kept you balanced in what you, you have done? Family is everything, you know. From, like you mentioned in, in, in your previous uh, statement, uh, there's been up and downs, you know, in the Black Stars, low and highs. They've been always there. Mm. They've been always there because you meet a colleague in the Black Stars. He comes for five years and you don't see him no more. But you know, with family, you see them every day, all day, every day. So, you know, and they've been, you know, there for me during the lows and the highs, you know, up and down. So, um, family is everything to me, and I believe uh, the same for you as well. Yeah. Do Do they feel the burden that sometimes you feel? You know, when you're playing a game. And Ooh. You can see the way the way guardians are. Like, um, your mother's like, oh God, today. My mom, my mom actually don't watch though. She doesn't. You know, always praying, and then she will come and peep just one. Eh, hey, And then she will go again. She'll be praying all the time, praying. You know, most of the mamas do that. You know, and uh, that's that's my mom always. And I remember one time uh, during the under twenty penalties, she mm. was actually. Uh, on her way to uh, pray, actually. And uh, she overheard someone say, Padre, what's the name of Say, you can't say the So she was like, oh, my God. So she went on her knees and started to pray at that spot. You know, it was just crazy, but she started to pray. And, uh, she, you know, she told me the story after that. Me catch you, I said, I'm going to say, so... It, it, it was just, you know, incredible to see my mom going to pray instead of watching us play and all that. So, you know, um, the role of a mother is just incredible. You know, that's why we need to cherish our, our parents so much, especially, you know, our moms, because, you know, they carried us for nine months, and um, I think they know us very, very well. Okay. It's um, a new generation of footballers hmm. that is coming through. When you sit back, looking, you know, where you are now, yeah. if you had an opportunity to talk to these young footballers mm. who are coming through, some of them wearing their national jersey, what would you tell them? What's the best piece of advice that I can give these Man. boys? Man, there's a whole lot, but I would just, you know, chip in. If uh, I'm to say all of it, we, we might, you know, write a book. Um, they need to build their character. They need to be disciplined. They need to... I put God first, so they they can do that as well if they want to go places. You know that is my way. So I would say put God first, and then um, your talent alone is not enough. Keep working. You know there's time to work hard. There's time to work smart, and um, you know like I said, build your character, be disciplined, and and be be teachable. You know because some of the guys under 17, under 20, they don't want to hear. Oh, I also say, hey, you know, you were supposed to do it here. But 
we the young guys that went through the, the, those uh, the 2009 badge, we were teachable. We were just always listening to each other, always wanting to help each other, wanting to lift each other, and, and that is what you know kept us going because I didn't know anything. And if someone was to, hey, say anything, I was like, okay. And then you do it, and the person will see that what he told you, you were doing it. And uh, it has got us you know, where we are now. So I would tell them to, like I said, God first, be disciplined, build your character, and keep working hard and smart, and you, know, you will get to wherever you want to get. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Mensa, no problem. For making time Thanks for, for having me. It's always a pleasure. It's, Thanks uh, for having me. It's been an invigorating conversation. You didn't with... let me say hello to my wife. Okay, please say hello to you. Yeah. Wife. I would... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I already did. <laughs> she heard me. Yeah, she will see you on TV, so... Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Mrs. Kafui Mensa. Yeah. Have a good one. <laughs> uh, she's looking at me. <laughs> okay. But it's been a pleasure having Jonathan Mensah. Thank you for having me. Uh, Thank on you the for program. having me. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. My name is Godfrey Akutobuafo. See you next time on Face to Face. Have a good day.